guys. Good morning. Here's what we're doing today. We're going to uh, we're transitioning from the first half of this unit on linear relationships into the second half of this unit on linear relationships. And we are going to review some of the things that we've already learned about how to find slope and your starting value and also introduce a new and third way to find the slope with given limited information. So let's review. All linear relationships will have equations written out in this form. Y equals mx plus b. m is your multiplier times the x value. It is your rate of change, your constant, your slope, your rise over run, in other words, your delta y, delta means change in, change in y over delta x, change in x. It is also referred to as your unit rate and your coefficient. So to go back and review, uh, we found slope by looking at your delta y, and we see that this is 2, 1, 3, and Initially, from looking at those numbers, we would say, oh my God, those are not linear because the rate of change is not constant. But to be certain, we also have to verify by looking at our delta x. And we see that our delta x here is 4, 2, and 6. Uh, again, different rates of change each time. But in order to be certain, we have to look at your delta y over delta x. And what we find is we have 2 over 4, 1 over 2, 3 over 6. And all of those reduce to one fraction called 1 half. Those are equivalent fractions, which means that, in fact, our rate of change is constant and the same each time. So... By looking at our delta y over our delta x, we can verify that the rate of change is constant and identify our slope for the purposes of writing our equation. The second way to find our delta, uh, our, our delta y over our delta x is to examine a slope triangle. To examine a slope triangle, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the change in x. And we're going to look in the change in y. And this slope triangle, the flat part of the stair is called the run. And the vertical part of the stair is called the rise. And so we look at where we started. We started at 15 and we ended at 18. So our run is 3. And our rise goes from 7.5 to 9.5, which means it is 1.5. So our rise over run is 1.5 over 3. And if you do the division there, which you can do right now with your calculator, make sure you're keeping your eyes on the board. 1.5 divided by 3 is 0 0.5, which happens to be the decimal equivalent for our slope from the table. So those match. This equals 0 0.5. So that is the second way, making the slope triangle, finding your delta x and your delta y and writing them in the slope formula. So those are the two ways to find slope that we've been using. To find the starting value in a table, you work your way backwards. You follow the pattern, and you work your way back to zero, and you find that when x is zero, y is zero. In the graph, you find where the line crosses the y-axis, right here. And in this case, we would need to extend our line so that the line goes through, so that we get through, intercept the y-axis, and we find that it does, in fact, go through zero. So if we are going to write this equation based on what we know right now, it would be y equals 0.5x plus a starting value of 0. You got your 0.5 here from the rise over run in the slope triangle. You got your 0.5 here by examining your delta y over your delta x. And now it's time to introduce a third way to find slope. And this is what you're going to be working with today. And this is straight off of your worksheet. This here is a graphic organizer. You can use it or you cannot, but the formula for finding slope is right here. 
m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what you're going to do here is you're going to find two coordinates, 6, 3, and 12, 6. And then you're going to label one coordinate 1. And just like reading a book, you're going to read from left to right. From left to right, whichever one comes first is coordinate 1. And whichever one comes second is coordinate 2. And you're going to take your coordinate 1 pairs. You're going to fill them in here. 6, 3, coordinate 2, 12, 6. And then you're going to put them in the proper place in the graphic organizer. Y2. We'll go to coordinate 2. What's the value of Y? 6. Y1. Go to coordinate 1. What's the vi value of Y? 3. X2. Go to coordinate 2. What's the value of X? 12. X1. Go to coordinate 1. What's the value of X? 6. Now all you got to do is subtract. 6 minus 3 is 3. 12 minus 6 is 6. 3 divided by 6 is 0 0.5, and now you have your M, 0 0.5. So it's just like doing a slope triangle, only you're doing it mathematically. Instead of drawing out the slope triangle like so, and finding that your X changed from 6 to 12, 6, and from, six, from 3 to 6, 3, and writing your run is over run is 3 over 6, you're just doing the math. You're saving yourself the time. You don't have to draw it. So let's write the equation. Y equals 0.5x plus what's the starting value? Well, to find the starting value, you go back and look at your graph, or you go back and look at your table, and you find that it's plus 0. So Y equals 0.5x plus 0. So the strategy for today is very simple. It's we're going to take two sets of coordinates. Coordinate 1 will be the first one as you read left to right. Coordinate 2 will be the second one as you read left to right. You're going to take y2 minus y1 to find your delta y. And you're going to take x2 minus x1 to find your delta x. Once you've established that, you have your slope. And you can write your equation. All right, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.